Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script pastries on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is come on over to this donut and if we click on it, you see it'll go into our inventory and then we press 1 to equip it and we click on it again and we can eat it. Okay, so now that you know what this script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So this script is going to consist of two parts. We're going to have one script that's for actually clicking on the donut and that puts it in your inventory. And then the second script is actually going to play the animation. Now you can either substitute these, do one or the other, but in this video I'm going to show you how to do both just so that you can have a full experience and a clean experience for your user. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is actually create our donut. And I'm just going to create a new part under workspace and I'm going to make it a cylinder. Uh, and as you can see right here, I can just scale it down a little. And I'm not going to put a hole in the middle just because this isn't a modeling channel, it's a scripting channel, but you can do this however you'd like. Uh, and I just want to put this out there guys, this does not have to be a donut. This could be a muffin, this could be a piece of cake, this could be anything you want. So anywhere where I say donut or where I show me making a donut or anything like that, you can substitute it for any other tool that you have. So it's super easy, this script is extremely versatile, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, so we have our part right here in Workspace, and I'm just going to name it Handle because we need something for the player to actually hold on to. Uh, and we have to put it inside of a tool for it to actually be able to go into the player's backpack. So I'm just going to create a new tool under Workspace and we'll name it Donut. And I'm going to drag this handle object, I'm just going to drag it right into the donut. Nice and easy. And as always guys, if you want to, I have the link um, of this model in the description. So you don't have to build it if you don't want, or you don't have to script it, you can just use the links in the description. Uh, so we have our donut right here, which is awesome. And that's all we have to do for modeling for now. Now we can actually get into scripting and animating this. So the first thing that I want to do is actually make the script that will put it into the player's inventory. So I'm going to click the plus button next to Donut and I'll create a new script underneath of it. And we're just going to name this uh, Inventory Script. So it's going to put it in the player's inventory. Now what we want to do is the way the script is going to be laid out, we're going to say when the donut is clicked, when a click detector under the donut is clicked, then we're going to clone the donut tool itself, put it in the player's inventory and do a few other things just to make sure we don't have any bugs or glitches or anything like that. Uh, so the first part of this is actually getting when donuts click. So I'm just going to create a new click detector underneath the handle, just like that. And if we go back into the script, we want to get a reference to the click detector. But first, I actually want to get a reference to the donut object itself. So I'm just going to create a new variable called donut. So local donut equals script.parent, just like that, because script.parent, right? Nice and easy, that is the donut. Uh, and then also we want to get a reference, as I was saying, to that click detector. So I'm just going to say local click detector equals donut dot handle dot click detector. Right? Donut dot handle dot click detector. Easy reference to that. Uh, so from here what I want to do is we're just going to do something real quick to fix a little bug that might happen. When we have this object down on the floor, we don't want people to be able to, we don't want players to be able to come up and step on it and equip it. We want to get rid of it called the touch interest. So, so we don't want that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to check if there is a touch interest. So I'm just going to say if tool.handle colon find first child touch interest. So if there's a touch interest underneath the handle, which means they'd be able to step on it to pick it up, then we're just going to say donut.handle.touchInterest like that, colon destroy. And actually in here, we have to change tool to donut, my bad. But you know, again, any type of object that you want to be equipped, you just change the name right there. Uh, from here, we can actually get when the player clicks on the click detector. So we're just gonna say click detector dot mouse click, hook into the mouse click event, and we'll connect it to a function, just like that. Uh, and then in this function, we'll grab the player because we need to know whose inventory we're going to put the donut in. We don't just want to say any player, we need the specific player who clicked. Uh, and now I'm actually just going to clone the tool. So local tool clone equals donut colon clone. So it's going to clone this whole object right here. And we also want to get a reference to the handle of that tool clone. So local handle equals tool clone. Dot handle. So in this case, it's going to be this part right here that's actually in the in the tool underneath the player's backpack. It's not this one in workspace. It's going to be the other one once we already clone it. 
So we have a reference to our handle, just like that. Uh, and now I'm just gonna set the parent of the tool clone. So tool clone dot parent equals player dot backpack. And this will put it in their inventory, nice and easy for us. Uh, and now what we wanna do is, so what right now what we have at this point is this is inside of the player's backpack. The script, the click detector, all that. We only want the scripting and the click detector if the thing is actually like on a counter or it's in the workspace. We don't want it if a player already equipped it. So we're gonna destroy this script and we're also gonna destroy the click detector. So I'm just gonna say in here, tool clone, or actually we can say handle because it's underneath the handle. So I'll say handle dot click detector, colon destroy, because we don't want the player to be able to click it. And then we'll also say handle dot anchored equals false because we need it to move around with the player. Uh, and finally, we only have one more line in this script. All we're gonna say is tool clone dot click inventory script like that colon destroy because we don't want the player to be able to click on it and it goes in their backpack that wouldn't be any good uh, and we can actually test this out right here and we just won't have an animation but so far it's actually looking really good if we just come up to it and we click on it you see it'll go into our backpack and you see what happened right there this is actually a mistake that I make a lot too it's actually bringing our character to the donut we want the donut to go to our player's character uh, so all we have to do for that is if this weld object is underneath of the handle, you just want to delete that weld. So if you move it, that might come back up. Just make sure that's gone or else your character is going to get flung all over your map. And um, we can try that again. And as you'll see, we have our donut right here. Uh, and I'm, you, can, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Uh, but because I have the plugin, I will. This is the tool grip editor plugin. Uh, and I can just make it so the player's holding the donut flat rather than at an angle. Uh, so what I can do is all I have to do is click on the tool and then if I click edit tool grip It allows me to use these different buttons to change how the player actually equips the tool uh, So I'm just gonna set it to 90 on the orientation Just like this Right there, and then it should make it so when we go back in it'll look a little bit more like a donut Even though it doesn't have a hole we can get it a little bit better uh, Just like that right so we have our donut super cool um, but what happens is now when we click or if we tap our screen if we're on mobile, it's not actually going to eat the donut. So we have to make that script and we have to make that happen. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do to actually make us eat the donut is we're going to use an animation. Uh, and the way to do that, it's super easy. You know, people say like, oh, you have to hire an animator. You don't. It's very easy, I promise. Uh, so all we have to do is click on the plugins tab up at the top of our studio and we're going to click on build rig. And I'm going to select block rig, and if your game is R15, you'll click on R15. But if it's R6, you'll click R6. Uh, and this will create a new, they call it a dummy, it's just an NPC inside your game. And this is what you're going to use to actually create the animation, the eating animation. So from here, what I'm going to say is right here we have this animation editor plugin. This all comes with Roblox. Uh, so we'll click on that, and then we'll click on our dummy. And I'm just going to name this donut eat animation but you can name this anything you'd like uh, and from here we can actually get to animating our eat script so what I'm gonna say right here is our first keyframe these little dots right here they're called keyframes so as this bar moves along the timeline the animation will play and it'll tween between these different keyframes so I know that sounds kind of complicated but just follow along with what I do and it should be super easy so all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this right here, this red thing, this rotational axis, uh, and I'm just going to put it at the place where the tool would normally be equipped, so that left hand or the right hand straight out. Uh, and then I'm just going to move this part right here, this, this right arm, and then same thing with the right hand. We need to set those keyframes. And then now I'm going to move our time bar right here, our scrub bar, to about halfway through the animation editor. Uh, and now I'm actually going to set it to the pose that I want for when we're eating. So I want it to be right up against our mouth so that it actually looks like the player's eating the donut. And I can move all these objects right here. And now we want it to come back at the end of the animation. We want our arm to go back to that original position. So I'm just going to copy this first keyframe right here, these four dots. I'm going to highlight them and then press Control C. And then I'm going to go all the way to the end and press Control V. And, and as you can see, it brings it right back. And then if we bring our scrub bar back to the beginning and we play it, it looks pretty cool, right? It's like an eating animation. 
And you can always adjust this if you want. Maybe I'll move it over just a little bit to make it more even. Uh, but you can play with this, make the animation however you want, be creative with it. Uh, and then from here, we just have one more step and then we can export the animation to Roblox. I'm going to click on the name right here and I'm going to click on set animation priority and I'm just going to click action. And all this does is ensures is when your player is moving, it doesn't overwrite the animation, your player animation. So it's really important that you set it to action if you want it that the animation always plays no matter the player's animation state. Uh, and then from here, all we have to do is click on export and we can export it to Roblox. So I'm just going to create a new animation and I'm going to name it Donut Eating Animation. Just like that. And I'm going to click finish and we're just going to give it one second and you'll see it'll upload to Roblox, export, and now our animation is in the Roblox catalog. Uh, and from here, what I'm going to do is you see we have these numbers right here after catalog and before redirect. I'm going to copy the number after zero and then I'm going to copy all the way up to the second number or the first number before the slash. So just control C on that right here. And this will ensure that you know, whenever we play our animation, it's going to play the right animation rather than someone else's. Um, so from here, we have our animation ID. I can actually paste it in, right? That's our ID. That's the way we get our reference to the animation. And now we can actually get into scripting it. So the first thing we have to do for this animation is create a new animation object underneath of our tool. So I'm just going to click the plus right next to the donut and create a new animation. Uh, and this works just like a sound if you're familiar with that. You specify an animation ID. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to paste in our ID. And there we go. Our animation is all set and ready to be played. Uh, and I'm just going to rename this to eat animation. But you, again, you can name this to whatever you'd like. It's just you just have to be able to get a reference to it in the script somehow. Uh, and then from here, I'm going to create a new script. And it's important, guys, that you create a new script rather than using this inventory script because we actually destroy this inventory script when the player picks up the tool. So it has to be inside of a new script because we don't destroy this. We need this script to run. Uh, and in this, I'm just going to name this Eat Donut Script once again, or I'll name it Eat Script. Uh, it could be named whatever you want. Uh, and in this script, we're going to do very similar to as we had last time. We're going to get a reference to the tool. So we're just going to say local donut equals script.parent. And then I'm going to say I want to get a reference to this animation object right here. So local eat animation equals donut.eat animation. And this is how we can get the animation so we can load it onto the humanoid later. Uh, from here, I want to get when the tool is equipped, so when the player presses one or when they click on it, when they equip the tool. And the way we do that is just by saying donut.equipped, and then we connect that to a function. And then inside of that function, you can get the mouse parameter if you want to do something with the mouse, but in this case, I don't need to do anything with it. Uh, and in here, super easy, all we have to do is say donut.activated and we'll connect that to a function. And all activated does is it says, if you're on mobile, if you click, it'll activate the tool, it'll fire this event. And if we are on PC, if we just click anywhere, it'll activate and it'll fire this event. So this is a much better way than doing it by saying mouse down, just because it makes sure that the player actually wants to eat the donut rather than it just being, maybe it happens the player clicked or they misclicked or something like that. This will ensure that the player actually wants to eat the donut. Uh, so inside of this right here, inside of this function, we're going to get a reference to the character. So local character equals donut dot parent. So the, the tool, when we actually equip it, the tool always goes underneath the character object. So if we just say tool dot parent, that always gets a reference to the character, which is super easy. Uh, and now what we want to do is create an animation track with that animation we had earlier. So we can't just play an animation. I know it kind of seems weird, but Roblox makes us load it to the character first. So I'm just going to say local animation track, we'll create a new variable, equals character.humanoid, and then we're going to call the load animation event of that, load animation, and then we're going to pass in our eat animation. And this will load it up to the character, it's ready, we can play it, we can stop it, we can call all these different functions on the animation. And from here we just have one more line and then we're completely done. All we have to do is say animation track, call and play, and it'll play our animation. Uh, we can actually go in and test it. You know, you can delete the dummy if you want. Uh, you just needed that to set up the animation. 
Uh, so we're going to click on it right here and it gives us a tool. I'm going to press 1 and now I'm going to click and as you'll see guys, well it's a little bit off, it's a little bit under our chin but you can always adjust that in the animation editor but it plays our animation as many times as we click it. Super cool. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the Paceman link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.